Hello viewers, welcome to Pentium Ministries, a ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, tasked with the responsibilities of bringing one billion souls to Christ. As we wish you happy viewing, please help and share this content, and our God will supply all of your needs. He does things so that I do it. He does things so everything God does is to make our joy complete. Everything. So how do we do it? I welcome you to June, the root of our positive results. I decree and declare that whatever business you find yourself to do, whatever decision you have to take this month, if you need positive results in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nothing shall ever be denied from you if it's good. But guess what? Whatever we want that is not good, let it be denied for the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why we order the two steps of righteousness. That means if you don't order your two steps, you are bound to take your own decision. But this month is going to guide us wholly heartedly to attain our height in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today's topic is very apt, but it's not for lecture. Today we're supposed to enjoy ourselves, sing to him, dance to him that we survived last month, and that should be the case. But before then, I want us to celebrate ourselves. If you celebrate God, you celebrate yourself. Why? Because not everybody that started me with us ended with us in June. So we have to sing to him for his faithfulness, for his love, for his protection, for everything. As we are singing, it will remind him of the sickness, any sickness in the body, because at the end of the service, it will be able to the mighty of Jesus. Amen.
the tent. As long as it is, we are also winners. Amen. Because whatever you lay your hand to do, whatever you want to do, in the name of Jesus, we are going to the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the platform that has given us everything we need to be that winner man and winner winners we are supposed to be. So we continue to win the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want us to refer to open your Bibles to Isaiah 53, verse 5. Very popular, very popular verse. We don't know it often. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Good. But he was wounded for our transgression. Wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Past tense, we are healed. Amen. So let's start. Iniquities where he was bruised. Transgressions, he was wounded. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All these point to sin. All these point to sin. So that leads us to ask what is sin after all. This is an act that offends God, especially in the biblical principles. Anything that negates the principles of God is a sin because you are trying to invent your own. Why didn't you create the world if you have to invent sin? So that means we've all seen and conscious of his glory. Any sin is opposite to what God has told us to do. God created man and brought out a, a Bible which is supposed to be and it is the rule book. You can imagine when you when you build something, you you alone knew how you were able to conceptualize it and build it. And it's supposed to be long lasting. And you release the manual. Then some people who are supposed to use the manufacturing goods they go and do their own manual. They were not there when you created the world, when you created the, the equipment and all that. Of course it's bound to fail. And when it fails, you not thinking you lose back to square one. And you lose everything. So that became sin. Like we all know the atomic sin and all that. Sin brings, first of all, sin separates us from God. It separates us from God. I want us to explain the essence of how sin invented, was invented and how it eventually became his name that such that he causes havoc within our bodies and eventually leads to death. So when you see the first thing that happens that your body starts decaying. Why? Because we all know that in the, in the Bible we are told that immediately Adam and Eve sinned, they became dead, they died physically. Physically as in spiritual. They died spiritually and that affected them physically. If you see, you know, these are these are days where people say there's nothing they can do but they keep on seeing. No. I would want to explain if you see the consequences first before telling you how to prevent it and how you can overcome it. If you see like I said, your body starts decaying. Gradually, because nourishment, there are three things, soul, spirit, and body. If you see, the spirit gives way. You will watch it. Then the, the nourishment the body needs to grow, to be in, uh, intact, and moving with death. So what does that mean? You have to stay out of sin. Especially drunkenness, prostitution, pride, greed, envy, and all that. So what are we saying? Let's look at John 5, verse 14. Remember you, the man that our Lord Jesus Christ made at the pool of Bethesda. Eventually met him again at the temple. What did he tell him? He said, Good. See, you have made it well. You have made well. See no more. This a worse thing comes to you. Establishing the fact that the man illness was caused by sin. 
Can you stop singing to them? Yes, you can. If you, you try to do it, 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 way of principle. If you sing, you won't communicate with God anymore, because that connection is broken. God is the spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in truth and spirit. So whatever you have to do to assess God, you must do that in the spirit and the truth. How can somebody stop seeing Jesus Christ? That's the truth. You can't handle it on your own. So what are we saying? If any man is in Christ Jesus, that's it. It's a new creation. All things have passed away. And all things have become new. So you now tap from the spring of Jesus. You can't do it by physical means. No, nobody can do it. It's when you submit to the wholeness, wholeness of Jesus, He will give you power to overcome sin. Remember, sin has power. So you need a, a superior power to overcome the power of sin. That's where we are going. Sin shall change your life. Why should you disobey God? when you know that there are consequences. Like I always say, for every sin you commit, you may be forgiven, but guess what? There are consequences. So, do you, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the consequences of sin or do you prefer the, 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 the brightness of God in your life? Now, how do you prevent sin again? Die to self. You need to Purge yourself of all negative thinking. All negative thinking. This thing starts from the brain. It starts from the thoughts. It starts from our thoughts. So that is why we, we, when we say, we say, God, can please make my thoughts pattern and my, my, my words be acceptable to you. Thought pattern and words. Because you can, out of the mouth comes the abundance of the heart. So if you suppress yourself, if you suppress and die to self, you will be thinking positivity. The moment you start thinking positivity, you start thinking negativity. And when you start thinking negative things, these things are wired to change you. It, it, it becomes imagination. First, you think of it, then you imagine it, then you act it. There are three steps. You think of it, you, 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 you imagine it, then you act it. Just like if you want to travel to, for instance, if you want to travel to anywhere, you first, the first thing that comes to your mind is the thought. I think I have to travel to the Israel. I think I want to travel to Nigeria. I think I want to travel to France. That's the first thing. Then you imagine yourself traveling, entering the aircraft, coming out of the aircraft, passing the borders, going to where you are going. You must think of all this before you act. So when evil things start coming to your thought system, you cast it away. And Make sure you think of only things that are pure and surviving and, of course, pleasing to the Lord. Next one is faith. I'm coming to a situation where we'll be, we'll be able to have, analyze the thought system and achieve what we want to achieve. And, of course, win, win the disease and sickness in our body. If you don't pass through this test, you won't be able to have faith that it will be cured. What I'm saying in essence is that for every sickness in your body, you have to first think that this sickness is in my body. Then what effect is it going to have? You start thinking negativity. You start thinking, is it going to be cured? So they said, uh, God forbid, HIV, HIV is not curable. This one is not curable. This, you are thinking of it as that. So today, we are going to ta tackle our thought system, tackle our imaginations and tackle our physical being in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Whatever you do, if you don't think positively, if you don't think that you've conquered that, you won't be able to conquer it. Because it comes from the system. According to Mark, Matthew 9, 20, Let's look at the woman that, that had issue of blood. Remember, for 12 years, she had issue of blood. I only cited the example because that's faith. 
she on her own, after having visited so many doctors, they messed her up, they ate a lot of her money, she couldn't, she, she lost so much. She said, these doctors have collected my money, they will not be able to cure me, and there is no hope of being cured, because according to them, there are no such medical records to, to, as evidence to be used. She said on her own, I have heard of Jesus Christ, why can't I explore this avenue? Besides, I don't have anything to lose. I don't have anything to lose. It's all about positivity. She stood up one day and said Jesus Christ was passing her street. Let her go and touch. If, I, if she could touch the hem of her garment, she, she would be healed. And she did not consult anybody. She did not take any advice from anybody. She stood up because if she had taken advice, that means she wouldn't have gone because they would have asked her, have you ever seen somebody cured by Jesus Christ on that, of that event? That would discourage her, that would affect her faith. So most times we should take decisions without consulting people because people can advise us from negativity, from their fearful nature, from their unbelief nature, from any kind of, depending on what religion or whatever, deity or whatever God they have. Some people have 200 gods. So if you are convinced, haven't consulted God that this is what you do for you, go on and do it and down to consequences. No matter what it is, you know that it gets to your flight. So she took decision, like I was saying, and guess what? Made up her mind that she was going to see Jesus. And of course, said that if she could touch his garment, she would be healed. That was a feat accomplished. And she did. Went and touched, touched him and she became healed. You can imagine that. Have you heard of Jesus Christ? Have you heard of him as a miracle worker? Have you confronted him and told him, this is my problem? Have you enjoyed his benefits? Have you done so wholeheartedly, believing that, not that he's going to do it or he's not going to do it? Jesus Christ, if you, you, you believe in him, everything you want, provided that you don't, it's, it's not a situation where you say, I mean, he may cure it or not cure it. You believe that he's going to do it, and he do it. Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So how do we build up our faith? You say, is it that you cure me or you cure me? It's not a situation where I, I, I may be cured today, I won't get cured. No, no, no. You build your faith according to the Bible. And of course, you, you succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One thing is certain, whether we like it or not, challenges will come. Challenges come in different ways. Medically speaking, people may have stroke, people may have kidney disease, all kinds of diseases, all kinds of brain, prostate, sleeplessness, and all that. These are things that come on their own without being invited. Have you opened your door for Satan to come and worry you? Remember, whatever, whoever that did it before decided it. So what do we do? You wholeheartedly believe that this is possible. Remember the thought system. Three things I want us to take home today. One, the thought system, the, 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 the imagination. The imagination and the acting. The thought system. What are you thinking? What are you imagining and what are you acting? If you forget every other thing, don't forget these three things. You need to consciously take hold of these three things and you become whatever you want to be. It's just Amen. Amen. Medically speaking, like I said, there are so many diseases ravaging people. Who told you that you can be cured of all of them? If you determine, you start from the thought system, you defeat the, the fear that. These things have come to ravage you. These things have come to make you go to the other side of the world, death and all that. That is not possible. There is nothing God can kill because he created us and made us whole. Remember, he made us according to his own image and likeness. And thus, by that, by that circumstance, whatever you decree in your heart, starting from your thought system, will be accomplished for you. That is the way. So, what am I saying? Music, please. What am I saying? 
they constantly believe in the efficacy of God. You may say that doctors are there to cure you. Yes, they, they cure. But remember, if you don't believe in the authority, if you don't believe in the, the system, you are, you are not there. So from time to time, it's God that will give you the way you're supposed to, when you are supposed to heal. And I decree and declare that whatever sickness in your body today will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Emotionally speaking, it's not only medical that people get healed. Emotionally speaking, people have a lot of issues that they can't phantom on. They have all kinds of issues, broken marriages, all kinds of things, all kinds of things. And Satan will take advantage of that and can put us to one side. You really that you, you, you have, you've done your best and you are, your best is not good enough to so whatever it is, it, 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 you, can, you can keep on seeing. I tell you what, that no matter what problem you have, if you take it to Lord Jesus Christ and wholeheartedly give it to him, he will do it for you, fix it for you, Amen. Amen. So other people have educational problems, they are not able to graduate. Some people have stayed so many years in university and all that, their brains are locked as it were. Who told you that you can't survive? Don't go that extra mile to see, to be a negativity. Take it upon yourself, pay it for the cross of Christ, and you will be brought of the new There is no problem on earth with that solution. So there is nothing on earth that will make you go negative. But for our positive thinking, believe that it's possible and it will be possible for you, my dear. Even if everybody has failed and failed, believe that your circumstance is different and you will succeed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Some people have financial problems. Devil tower disappointment and all that. People just keep on having all kinds of imaginable problems. Just what I, what the message I'm bringing to you today is not not just that of hope, but that of conviction in your, in your mind that you're going to achieve whatever you plan to put your hands to do. Because one, we were created according to the zone image. I want you to keep on remembering that whenever the problem comes to you, what 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 did you do? You say this thing shall pass away. This problem will pass. Provided you take it to God, you put in all your, all your system and take it to I tell you what, it's possible. Stagnation is a major factor. If you are stagnant, you don't know what to do, you are just at a place. It's the law of the devil. We are born to keep on moving. Remember, he said, go and be a free thing that will last. Gain of it means productivity. Gain of it means extension, moving ahead. I prophesy. And receive. In the name of Jesus, whoever that is stagnant among us will move ahead in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, in the, in, the, in the East, there are all kinds of people, all kinds of families that initiate people into so many things. This, this people will need healing too. You just be doing things, you be going round, 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 round. You don't know what you are doing. I prophesy. And receive. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Whatever initiation we were initiated without our consent, even with our consent that is negative to our lives, we cancel it with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Life is very interesting. The way you Put life is the way to continue. If you wake up every morning and say, I am blessed and mighty favored, no profession against me will prosper. If you declare it that day, as you are declaring, because what you are speaking is power, is life. The atmosphere is taking it, the system is taking it, everything around you is taking it, and they will all work towards your goal. This is imperative. So when you wake up every morning, you command your money. Say, I take over everything that God has created. Let every God that has created work to my for my favor in the name of Jesus. Whatever you call, you talk to the Son, you talk to everything. They, they hear the word of God. And before you know it, they will start tilting towards you. And whatever God you see, the fruit will be achieved. This works like magic. But I tell you, it works because 
he who has created us is above who, whatever the temptation we are going to in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will be saddled with responsibility to grow. And it's an admonition. That means nothing can stop us from growing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Next one is boldly. You see, you have to be bold when you want to heal yourself. Remember the ten lepers, they were bold. They say, Son of David, heal us, cure us. They did not, they did not reject. You don't have to be ashamed of yourself that you are sick and you want to complain to God. If you if you take it hook nine sinker, what I'm telling you, God will because he, he's not a God of hiding. He doesn't hide. They said, cure, can you cure us? Cure us. He told them, go and show yourself to the priest. It was automatic. Although one came back and said, I feel it and all that. I'm coming to that. And those nine were cured, but they were not cured fully in terms of things that logistically cure it. Except the one that came back and said, thank you, thank you for, for keep killing me. So what I'm saying is, if you have sickness, go to God in your closet, in your room, lock the door, complain to him, tell him what you want, and of course he will heal you in Jesus' name. Amen. Testimony. It's imperative that we give testimony because why? The Bible says we overcame the, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So by and large, you have to keep on confessing and professing and testifying to the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. With that, you will be healed holistically in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow.